Yo, D. Wood, Anthony Rogers. We're actually out here with a bunch of Christians out here in front of a mosque in Orange County. Gonna hand out a lot of materials. What's crazy is in a time where people are going around beheading others and stuff like that, a lot of people have a problem with Christians peacefully handing out copies of the New Testament in Arabic. Weird, weird times we live in. I'm Catholic. And you're Muslim now? Yes. And it was cool because he was walking out of the mosque here and he recognized me. And it's cool because we just had a conversation for about 30, 40 minutes discussing theology, the Bible, the Quran, New Testament, all this stuff. That's cool. No one gets hurt. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Uh, so, Habibi, you, you, let's say, all right, I don't know the classes, you know the classes. Does it change the information in here, what it says about Muhammad not knowing? Right. Muhammad does not know whether he's going to go to heaven. He doesn't know. He told, he told, yeah. Does it change the information in here? There was a gentleman when he was coming into the mosque, I asked him, what do I need to do to go ahead and enter Jinnah? What do I need to do to enter heaven? He said, just be a good Muslim. So I told him, are you a good Muslim? He says, I try to be. Do you know if you're going to heaven? He says, yeah, I probably will. And I said, well, in the Quran, it says that Muhammad doesn't know whether on the day of judgment whether he's going to heaven or not. So I went ahead, and he told me that I wasn't telling the truth. I went ahead and pulled my Quran out, and he was with his son, so I was respectful. I went ahead and showed it to him. So uh, I said, can you talk to me when you come out? And so then he had left, and uh, so when they got done with prayer, I just happened to come over here. I walked across the street. He was there, so we renewed our dialogue and just basically... He told me I didn't know what I was talking about. I didn't speak uh, uh, Arabic. And I said that you read it there in Arabic. And so he says, well, Muhammad's just talking about here on earth. You know, he might, Muhammad was talking about maybe if you get a cold, he doesn't know if he's gonna get a cold or break an arm or anything. I said, did it say that in Arabic any place? About breaking an arm or, or getting a cold or anything? I says, no, Muhammad didn't know. So then I said, it's in the Hadith. And I just happened to have my, like, you know, Oh, you had it, you had it where, yes. where it talks about that? I, I pulled it out, and, and then he didn't want to see it, and then he started questioning me on, on the grades of the Hadith, and I said, well, this is Sahid, and he says, see, you don't know about grades or anything. What's Sahid? I said, it means sound. He says, but you don't speak Arabic, so was, the attack went to me, and then he says, you don't even know what this is saying in Arabic. I said, but I have the Arabic English. Muhammad didn't know on the Day of Judgment whether he was going to go to heaven, and he told his whole family he didn't know if any of he said, you have to save yourselves. His favorite daughter, Fatima, he had tears in, in his eyes saying, you have to save yourselves from the fire of hell. And I said, even though I don't know the grades, does it change the information's in the book? And would you like to go ahead and read it in Arabic? So he, he grabbed my arm. He was getting real upset with me, but I was like real calm. And I told him I cared about him. So his sons had to give him away. But I told him there's two witnesses. You have the, uh, the Quran and you have Sahid al-Bahari. It said that Muhammad didn't know whether it's going to heaven, but I said that Jesus knows, because Jesus says you believe in Allah, also believe in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it weren't, so I wouldn't tell you. And where I go, you can go also. And Jesus said in John 5, 24, that he gives us eternal life when we put faith in him. So the gentleman was kind of upset with me, and I guess he was trying to win an argument with, uh, with his sons with me there, though, but I'm not here to go ahead and argue. I want to go ahead and share the love, compassion, and love of uh, Jesus Christ. So.
so it went well there. Yeah, we, uh, we were over there. We got a lot of cars come out. Uh, not too many people took literature, but the message of the gospel was clear, and so it was communicated through our love, through the message of the gospel, the, the word of God. And we did have a good conversation with a man named Jamel, which I believe means beautiful. Okay, so um, he said, just one thing I want to tell you, and then I'm going to leave. And then he was there for half an hour. Yo, so I believe uh, someone told you that you're kind of a jerk for coming out here. People are going to the mosque and talking to people. How'd you respond? Uh, I, the response was real easy. The gentleman came and asked me, um, why was I here? He was flabbergasted. He, uh, words cannot describe why a bunch of Christians were here uh, spreading the love of Jesus Christ. And my answer was real simple. It's because I love you. He said, yeah, but you're not understanding me. You're here in front of a place of worship. Why would you do something like that? And I said, it's very simple. It's because I love you. And so the more I started giving him about the gospel of how much I love him is the reason why we do what we do. The more he could not... Um, well, he cannot entertain his words. He cannot uh, articulate what he wanted to say. And it's because of that, when I said, excuse me, but no one's uh, burning crosses. No one is actually, um, you know, chopping off your heads or anything like that. As soon as I said that, as soon as I started speaking about the behaviors and action of Islam, he told me to tone it down. And then he said I could carry on with my message. So um, what is the main conclusion? What is the, sum uh, the summation? It's easy. It's because we love you. That's why we do what we do, M2M, Ministry to Muslims. I'm with my t teammate Linda, and uh, we were talking to, uh, you know, we're holding the signs about Jesus loves you and stuff, and uh, there was a gentleman who uh, happened to be passing by. He wasn't a Muslim, but we went ahead and started talking to him, and we were asking him thought-provoking questions about Jesus. He said he knew about Jesus. We talked to him about what, what it means to be born again. He says, no, I'm not that. And, you know, how can you be born again? And it just tied into uh, uh, John chapter uh, 3. And we just went ahead and Linda and I shared with him. Uh, and then he said that he'd like to go ahead and accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So we went and we prayed with him. He accepted Jesus as his Savior. Linda went ahead and gave him some uh, Christian tracts. And uh, amen. We decrease, God increases, and he gets all the glory. Yo, what's up? David Wood. Tony Rogers just spent almost two and a half hours outside the mosque. No one got beat up. Very friendly people. Uh, what was your experience, Tony? Well, there were a few times I thought someone should beat you up, but uh, it was good overall experience. <laughs> I think experience. that all the time. <laughs> yeah, we had a great time. Good conversations. A couple of guys, uh, you know, they got a little animated, but, uh, you know, we, we were able to peacefully uh, speak to them of Christ and uh, had a, a good time interacting with Muslims. Yeah, so guys, uh, I, I I do run into Christians who think you can't talk to Muslims because they're just going to beat you up or something. And no, you can either get in a good conversation, lots of them will be really friendly. Um, if they're not, they tend to ignore you and just walk on by because they can be annoyed and that, that's, that's understandable, but pretty rare to just get beat up. So stop being scared.